How we spend time in the digital world might not be how we actually want it to be. In fact, a lot of time, it felt like it's controlling us instead. Feeding us content they want us to see, making us like what they want us to like. Just like how Drake appeared everywhere on Spotify, or that period where U2 albums is in everyone's iTunes. So what I'm trying to say here is we actually don't have as much control as we think we do. But at the very least, there's still things we can do to make the time we spend on the digital world more intentional. So I've prepared 7 digital minimalism habits that can help you out. To gain that digital control back into your life, first thing first, track your screen time. You can manage what can't be measured. I truly believe in that. Numbers and analytics are great tools for you to know where you are today and how you can improve for the better. Instead of calling it habit, I'll say it's a great way to start your digital minimalism journey. I can't tell you how much time we need or limit since we all have different lifestyle. But ask yourself this, is this the kind of world you want to be in, mostly digital? Get the phone out of the bed. It's a known fact that screen exposure will affect our sleep quality because the blue light will suppress our melatonin and delay our circadian rhythm. I know a lot of us are so used to this kind of lifestyle, thinking that it doesn't really affect us, we can't really feel it. But that's what we think. And we have the night shift turn on to adjust the screen color to a warmer tone for our eyes. There's a study that showed there's not much differences between the regular setting as compared to the night shift. Both ways will still suppress our melatonin. It would be better to have the night shift on and reduce the brightness to the lowest. So I'll say it's still better for us to stop using our phone 30 or an hour before our bedtime. I know it's tough, but that's the reason why we ended up using it past our sleeping time, which reduced our sleep duration and made us extra groggy in the morning. I know how addictive it is to scroll through social media before our bedtime, so I think it's important for us to have a replacement in order for us to remove this bad habit. It could be journaling, reading, or meditating. One good way for us to execute this is to place our phone in a different room, effective but a little bit extreme, and a lot of us are using it as an alarm. So you might consider getting a separate alarm. Mine is broken, so I'll still have to use my phone as an alarm. And if you are doing this as well, another way to add friction between you and your phone is to place your phone across your room, away from your bed. That's how you disassociate your bed from entertainment or work because it's purely for sleep. Not to mention, the distance you need to walk to stop your alarm can push you out of bed too. Notification is one of the biggest distractions of the digital era. I mean, what other distractions are there before the introduction of smartphone? I can't think of any, but with notification, every ring, vibration, or light makes us really curious. We stop focusing, turn our head, and divert our attention to the notification. We have to admit, half of the time, those notifications are pretty useless. They are there just to distract us. So take some time to filter out what notification you allow to appear on your device and not accepting every single piece of information in and allow them to distract your attention. But do take note that it doesn't need to be too extreme when it comes to removing notifications. I mean, some of them serve us really well as a good reminder. I once turned off too many notifications to a point where I was late for my library book return date. I missed a few emails and alerts that needed immediate action and verification code. So turn off your notification carefully, learn from my mistake and don't be minimal for the sake of being minimal. Go analog. I know it's so convenient to have all the tools you need in just one phone. But the thing is, whenever you unlock a phone for a single task, due to its multi-purpose quality, it will eventually lead you to a path of doing something not related to your first task. For example, from checking your time, to opening social media, to scrolling through online shop, one distraction leads to another. That's why I kinda love the AT vibes where a phone is just a phone. And if you feel the same as well, a great way to execute this can be having a physical alarm clock, writing notes on a physical notepad, taking pictures with film camera, reading a physical book, listen to music from a machine. I'd love to have a vinyl turntable someday. Just to listen to music, and not listen to music with the distraction of a glowing screen. Don't get me wrong, I still love the convenience from this multi-purpose tool, 
but it does feel good to detach ourselves from our phone every once in a while and not be too heavily dependent on it all the time. Curate your content. Despite digital minimalism, I don't really want to reject social media. Like many, I still see value in using it. It's a place where I find inspiration for interior design, photography, tattoo, coffee, plants, and just anything that I like. So I think it's important for me to curate my social media by muting and unfollowing accounts. And for the explore page, that's my favorite. There's always new inspiration there, but if I see any posts that I don't like, I'll let the system know by telling them I'm not interested. The same goes for YouTube. If it's recommending videos that I'm not interested in, the not interested button is there to help. I know it's impossible for us to control the algorithm, but we can always tame the algorithm and not let it feed us all the random content. Of course, if social media acts as a distraction, then don't use it when you know you shouldn't. That's more important than curating the content you consume. It's all about the discipline, knowing when you should do it and when you should not. And that's the reason why we need to have a phone routine. A system for you to use your phone. A habit for your habit. So you can ingrain those rules in your mind. For example, no phones before bed, no phones in the morning, no phones during conversation. You might even go to the extreme of having a specific time to use your phone. This structure is here to prevent our brain from searching for a quick high of scrolling. To kill the habit of picking up our phone mindlessly just because we are bored. I use the Forest app to ban myself from browsing websites and apps I shouldn't visit when I'm supposed to stay focused. But the tricky part is when I need to do my research through YouTube because those thumbnails are luring me to click in. You know, even those videos that don't interest me normally suddenly become so captivating when I'm supposed to do my work. So my trick for this is to log out of your account or use the watch later function. At least the video you want to watch are saved. And you can always watch it later as a reward when it's the right time. In some sense, a carrot motivation approach to get things done. The habit of organizing your digital space regularly is essential as well. We often declutter and organize our living space, but neglect our digital space. So don't forget to dedicate some time to reorganize our work files, backup photos, delete emails, and remove unwanted apps. Our devices are productive tool for many of us, so we wouldn't want to be overwhelmed by digital files to a point where it paralyzes our daily lives. So set aside a time and create this habit of keeping your digital space clean. I have to say, the process is therapeutic as well when you see those empty digital space you have. Those are the habits I would like to recommend, and I'm trying to adopt some of them too, especially the bad habit of using my phone in my bed. So that's all I have for you guys. If you're new here, you might want to consider joining us by subscribing to this channel. I'll continue to make more videos like this, and a click on the like button will help to support this channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching this and I'll see you guys on the next one.